Welcome to GreenVis Studio. I'm Nithara Jaindran, and I'm excited today to be speaking with Sam Reamer, U.S. Public Sector Nature Services Lead at Deloitte. Hi, Sam. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, happy to be here. So let's just get right into it. I would love for you to set the stage for us. What are your major concerns with the current state of climate and global temperature rise in relation to nature and biodiversity in your work? Sure. So I think as we turn the attention to climate, a lot of the first reactions societally were to start looking at how we reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And I think one thing that was overlooked in that initial sprint was kind of the critical role that nature plays in both that GHG reduction strategy, but also how it underpins really all of our economic and societal needs. Our planetary boundaries in many ways have been exceeded already, and that has substantial consequences when we think about water security, food security, even access to critical minerals for the technology that we need today. So as we look at the continued rise of the temperature globally and the impacts that climate change are having around resiliency for all of our states and federal agencies, we're really, really needing to pay attention to the, the ecological impacts that we're seeing across nature as well, especially because although, you know, direct air capture has really improved technologically in the past couple of years, there's still not much that's better than a tree when it comes to GHG reduction. Absolutely. And I think this is an issue that's on the top of so many people's minds. I know it keeps me up at night. Um, But one word that you used was resiliency. And that sort of leads me to my next question, which is two pronged. So in terms of nature based solutions, what do you see as the biggest opportunity for resiliency in the federal space to leverage nature based solutions to protect, manage and restore our natural resources? Absolutely. So I know that the federal government has been doing a lot to look at nature-based solutions and how we better manage both the integration of those into our resiliency strategies, but also how we proliferate, improve natural resource management across the U.S. and abroad. I think we see a lot of investment that has happened in the past in nature-based solutions, especially around emergency response management. So for example, during Sandy Hurricane Sandy, we saw a lot of investment from Department of Interior in coordination with FEMA around doing things like creating oyster castles to be able to improve coastal resiliency against flood in the future. And as we are now nearing more of a nature positive, nature forward outlook in the U.S., we're seeing a lot more coming from the federal government in terms of like the U.S. strategy or sorry, the U.S. roadmap for nature based solutions, as well as the integration of more nature based solutions when we're thinking about America the Beautiful and other initiatives that are happening. Federal agencies, although they don't necessarily own majority of the land in the U.S., do have a large footprint. So, for example, our Department of Defense has significant footprint with their installations. And as they look to achieve net zero goals, nature-based solutions can be a really, really viable alternative to gray infrastructure to not only increase resiliency of the installations, but also improve path to net zero goal achievement. And so as we look across our agencies, some of which are in the natural resource management space, some of which are not, there's a significant opportunity for those agencies to leverage the funding that they're receiving to be able to integrate nature-based solutions into their portfolios effectively and change both the way that they approach climate resiliency, but also while also adding like ecosystem benefits to the communities that they're impacting. Thank you, Sam. I think when we think about federal uh, implementation of nature-based solutions, we think big budgets and big agencies. But what about on a local and state level? How can um, these smaller institutions and organizations implement resiliency in nature and biodiversity? Yeah, absolutely. So the states play a critical role in integrating nature-based solutions into our domestic strategy here in the U.S. for climate resilience and GHG reduction. I would say the IRA represents the largest investment in nature that the U.S. government has ever made. And a lot of that funding is actually accessible to states via the programs that have been and are being stood up under the IRA. So in addition to IRA funding that's available, 
we know a number of states are also reinvesting or rejiggering their budgets a little bit to really focus on nature and better natural resource conservation. And when it comes to states implementing nature-based solutions, there are a couple of things that really drive impact in ways that the federal government would like to support and wants to, but really has to be at the state level. So the first is the localization of those nature-based solutions, really looking at how do these solutions, how are they designed for the localities that they're serving, and how do they integrate equitably with the communities that are both impacted by the nature-based solutions, but that are also really, really critical to the design process for the nature-based solution to be effective and sustainable. I think states also have to make really critical decisions around when gray infrastructure and green infrastructure is most important. And we definitely support a lot of clients in their way of thinking around how can we integrate investment into green infrastructure um, in a more tangible way and with a better return on investment for our state. And that's something that I think is really, really important when we think about resiliency in the U.S., And then the other piece that I think has to happen at the state level and that we are seeing is a lot of nature-based solution design and management through transboundary issues, right? So when we think about especially water security as that comes to the forefront and using water or sorry, using nature-based solutions to improve things like water quality, we see a lot of states starting to think about with, for example, like the Colorado River, how do we best work together to conserve resources, to best meet supply and demand needs? Um, And how do we then integrate nature-based solutions into our thinking for a lot of those very important challenges um, as we kind of move forward in our efforts to become more agile and adaptable and resilient? So I think states are, I mean, the federal government is obviously doing amazing things with uh, nature-based solutions and trying to really like lead the way with the roadmaps and a lot of the other work like nature assess- the national nature assessment, but the states really are going to be the core drivers of a lot of this change and a lot of the bringing to the forefront of NBS as a, as a pathway towards resiliency. Thank you, Sam. And I think that piece that you mentioned on localization is extremely important when considering things like native species and indigenous communities. Um, To wrap up this interview, I'd like to ask you an enlightening question. What is one nature-based solution that you really have your eye on right now? Ooh, that's so difficult because I feel like it depends on the context. So I have really liked seeing some of the innovative nature-based solutions and financing mechanisms emerging and being paired together. So I recently read about Washington State's efforts to preserve hectares of forests from timber mining and then working with their local indigenous populations to create a financing mechanism through which those carbon credits that are sold from the saved uh, timber are able to then be passed financially to the populations for different educational needs and other infrastructure needs. Um, And it was done in close collaboration with leadership from those communities. So I love seeing that kind of ecosystem approach emerge, not to be punny about it, um, where you see kind of the handshake between the nature-based solution, but also the ingestion of that solution into like the economic models for the state. So I think innovative practices like that, we're going to see a lot more of, and those are the kinds of things where that innovation meets nature-based solutions that I have my eye on right now. Thanks, Sam. I really appreciate your time. And to our viewers, you just heard from Sam Reamer, U.S. Public Sector Nature Services Lead at Deloitte. Thank you.